Hey everybody, welcome back to Our Liberty House. My name is Lucas and it's the first day of November, nice and cloudy, rainy day, and we are going to be adding some beneficial nematodes to all of our garden beds. We saw some of our older videos, we had an infestation of root knot nematodes in our tomato bed and that brought us here today. And this is gonna be part of our strategy to fighting not only root knot nematodes, but a ton of other garden pests. So stick with us and we're gonna go over how to add beneficial nematodes to your garden beds. All right, so how did we get here? When we were harvesting or pulling out our tomato plants, I pulled some of the roots out and I could notice that we had these big bulbous knotty roots, which is indicative of root knot nematodes, which cause your tomato plants and a lot of other plants to not be able to like spread long, deep roots. They kind of get rooty and knotty, hence the name. And then that uh, prevents them from uptaking nutrients. So we decided to do a bunch of research and this was one of the easiest and best ways we found to combat not only root knot nematodes, but anything else that is like pupa, larva, eggs that then come and infest your garden. So different gnats, moths, cabbage loopers, um, these beneficial nematodes will help fight those, especially going into winter. It doesn't freeze here, so they kind of go dormant, but these nematodes will seek out and hunt out the larva of those um, garden pests and it also go after the nematodes that are the root knot nematodes. So we bought this at the local garden store and I know it says fungus gnat control. Um, they're actually all the same, at least at our local um, nursery, all the nematodes are the same. So there's like three different brands. There's like grub control, flea control, fungus gnat control. And if you look, I'm gonna butcher this name, but it's Stein and Nernema Feltier is the type of nematode. And if you look that up, it does um, kill or help reduce the populations of root knot nematodes. All right, so the first thing we're gonna start with is we have to make this nematode tea. And so this all comes in the packaging, except for we have two gallons of distilled water. You wanna use distilled water um, or non-chlorinated water if you can um, to potentially not kill or harm any of the nematodes. And then it comes with this like little mesh bag and 7 million, as the packaging says, nematodes that are kind of inoculated into this vermiculite. And what you're gonna do, okay. all right, what you're gonna do is you're gonna pour all of this into this bag, Try not to. That's okay if you get some in there because that's the water we're going to use. This just helps prevent your sprayer from getting clogged up. So you're going to tighten this up. Kind of wanna, so it doesn't get all over the place. You're just going to make this into a T and swirl it around. That's going to release all the nematodes into this water. And then we are going to let this sit for an hour and then we'll wring it out, rinse it out, and then we'll add it to our little handheld sprayer here. And we'll spray all of the garden with it in the soil and inoculate all of our garden beds with these beneficial nematodes. Um, and then even some of our um, citrus trees that have leaf miners, this will go after the leaf miners too. So we're gonna use a little sprayer you don't have one you can definitely use um, just a uh, watering can but this seven million nematodes will treat a uh, thousand to two thousand square feet of garden space depending on you know how uh, dense you want to go after um, each bed so we're going to use this because then we'll be able to get all of our garden spaces um, treated and inoculated with beneficial nematodes so we'll let this sit for an hour and then we'll go come back and treat the garden
it's been an hour and we filled up one of our uh, sprayers with the beneficial nematode tea and we're just going to apply it to all of our garden beds and you know here we're going to get it kind of right in to get it down in the soil And this is a completely natural way of fighting off bad pests in your garden and bad nematodes. Um, you can buy like chemical products that kill nematodes, but they're non-selective. Where these are selective, these aren't going to hurt your plants. They're going to kill the bad things. Where just a chemical spray that might be marketed for root not nematode and other things, it's going to kill all of your soil life and your microbial life that you've hopefully built up with good compost and good manure. So we're going to add beneficial nematodes. We're going to use you know natural products to try to get the soil to fight back on its own rather than using a chemical input. And this is the bed that was by far the most affected, so I'm gonna do this one a little heavier than the rest. One good way of thinking about these beneficial nematodes, it's like adding a probiotic to your diet where a chemical spray is like just a broad spectrum antibiotic. It might kill all your gut health if you have a bug where using probiotics help uh, introduce the healthy microbes to you know, an environment rather than just killing everything off and having this like inert uh, sterile soil. You know, this garden bed had uh, two of our green zebras and they looked healthy when we pulled them out. But just to be careful, like I said, we're gonna treat all the beds and especially the areas that um, we had tomatoes in just in case it spread over. It was whether it was in our like seed starting mix or how, who knows how it got spread, but we wanna prevent it from infesting our whole garden. So we'll just treat all of the beds. One more thing to note is that we want to do this um, not in direct sunlight. So especially you know when you're making your tea and you're letting it rest for an hour, don't leave it in direct sunlight. That'll kill the nematodes. They're very susceptible to um, UV rays. And then also when you're applying them, it's best to do it you know maybe in the evening or like today a cloudy day. And then you're going to water them in. Luckily for us, it's going to rain a little bit later, so. Um, the soil's already really saturated and then it'll just rain it in tonight for us. But you just don't want to do this in the heat of the day um, or in direct sunlight. So this is our second sprayer. You can see it's like cloudy too, like there's definitely something there, but um, the nematodes themselves are microscopic. A couple more of these, at least one, probably another three quarters, so. I'll do a couple more beds.
These, uh, this type of nematode will also kill leaf miners, which usually die in the cold anyways, but both our citrus trees, our lime and our uh, lemon tree, both have signs of leaf miner damage. So I'll just spray these while we're doing the rest of the garden. Because it can't hurt. You know, we have a lot of signs of damage of um, like cabbage worms or cabbage loopers over here. And this will kill the lar when they're in their larva or their pupa stage, um, or it'll attack the egg. So this will help um, with all of this kind of, um, looks like some sort of cabbage moth damage. All right, so we did two full sprayers and we covered all of our garden beds and we have, you know, maybe a half a gallon left here and we are just gonna pour this in the bed we know for sure had root knot nematodes because we really wanna get after an attack though. So we're gonna do that. And while we're out there, we're gonna take the vermiculite soaked nematodes that we use for the tea bag and you're just gonna not bury the bag, but you can untie this bury this in your soil and then whatever nematodes are left in this vermiculite mix will be able to like continue to inoculate your soil so we won't let this go to waste we'll use that and we'll pour this in the area that we know we have root knot nematodes and that's what we're going to do i really appreciate you guys watching hit that like and subscribe button for us and we'll see you next week